ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speeches of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything that we introduce into this deen of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as Allah, He mentioned to us in the Qur'an, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الْذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another because reminding one another benefits the believers. And in the course of what the Ummah is going through in this world, especially what is happening to our beloved brothers and sisters in every area where they are being oppressed, but especially in our current days in Gaza, in Palestine, in the West Bank, in Jerusalem, and all over, many of us will become impatient with Allah, or question Allah, or ask why our dua is not being accepted. And when I gave this khutbah a few months ago, there were some who said you should give that khutbah every week, or some who said you should repeat it once a month, indefinitely, because of the reminders that it comes with. So at this time, knowing that we want Allah to our, accept our dua, to aid our brothers and sisters in Palestine and all across the Muslim lands, and all across the, all across the globe, let us remind ourselves why maybe our dua will not be accepted. Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he was a third century scholar, a companion of Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, and he was asked about the statement, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ سَيَدَخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ He was asked about the statement of Allah, what Allah says, what means, and your Lord said, invoke me, call upon me with Tawheed and ask of me for anything, and I will respond to your invocation. Verily, who, those who scorn my worship, who leave off making dua, and do not invoke me, do not believe in Tawheed, they will surely enter Jahannam, hellfire and humiliation. فَقَالُوا مَا بَالَنَا نَدْعُوا فَلَا يَسْتَجَابَ لَنَا So they asked, we're supplicating, Allah said this, we're supplicating, but it is not answered. So He said to them, ten points of why maybe your dua will not be answered. He said to them, لَأَنَّكُمْ عَرَفْتُمَ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ تُطِيعُوهُ He said, because you know Allah, but you do not obey Him. You know Him, what He created for you for. كَمَا قَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah said what means, I did not create jinn, uh, ins, humans or jinn, except to worship me. And this is the purpose of our creation. And he's the only one who should be worshipped in truth. And this is the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. That there is no God worthy of worship in truth. No deity worthy of worship in truth. No object worthy of worship in truth. Except for Allah alone without partners. He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Alladhi khalqa samawati wal ard fi sittati ayyamin thumma stawa'a bil arsh. 
The one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, though he could have done it in the blink of an eye. And then he istawa, he arose, rose above his ash, above his throne, separate from his creation. He arose it in a manner which suits his majesty to be above his throne. This is Allah, the one to whom belong and asma and husna, the most beautiful names and the loftiest of attributes. Remember on Yom al Nazid, the day of increase, where the inhabitants of Jannah will be called by Allah. He will say, Aina ibad al ladina ata'uni bil qaybi wa lam yarawni. Where are my servants who used to worship me and pray to me and ask of me and beg of me, even though they did not see me? And this is the day that Allah caused the inhabitants of Jannah to see His face. What an honorable day, and may Allah make us from them. This is the day that we should all seek to. So you know Allah, but you do not obey Him. Rather, you've taken other things as your God. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُمُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غَشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Have you seen him who takes his own lust, his vain desires, as his ilah, as his God? Because that's what we see the people doing. Taking the desires as their God, money as their God, their loved ones as their God, instead of Allah Azza wa Jal. Have you not seen the one who takes his vain desires as his ilah, as his God? And Allah knowing him as such, he let him be astray and sealed his hearing and his heart. And he put a covering over his sight, who then will guide this person after Allah. Will you not then remember? So this is a warning from Allah Azza wa Jal. You know Allah. You have proof that He exists, that He created everything around you. Till this day we can't create a fly from nothing. And yet we do not worship Allah or obey Him the way He commanded us to. So we must ask ourselves, if we know Allah exists, and we do when we affirm that, but we don't obey Him, then why should He answer our dua? وَعَرِفْتُمْ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا بِهِ and you recite the Qur'an, you know the Qur'an, you know it's the speech and the words of Allah, huwa Allah, the roof of Allah, kalam Allah, the words of Allah, al namdud min as samai ila al-ard, I'll stretch from the heavens and the earth. Allah said, tamassaku bih, hold on to the book of Allah. Our Prophet said, ta'ahadu hadha al-Qur'an, safeguard this Qur'an, recite it, implement it, teach it so it's not lost from you like an animal would be lost if it wasn't tied to a pillar or to a pole or to a post. Safeguard this book, you know the Qur'an. Allah gave ayah after ayah, proof after proof, miracle after miracle inside of it to prove that it's the truth. Promising that it would never be changed. Yet we do not obey its commands. Allah Azza wa He said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says what means that we send down this Qur'an. It, that which is a healing and a mercy for those who believe in Tawheed and they act upon what is revealed in this Qur'an. This deen is not just hearsay. It's not just saying, I believe there has to be actions along with it. This Qur'an is a book for every day of your life, not just the month of Ramadan. But we've made it that. So that we go back to the ayah, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا, يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمَ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا as we know in the Qur'an, Allah said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, will say, Oh my Lord, my people have deserted this book and deserted this Qur'an. And we want to question why maybe Allah may not be giving us what we're asking Him for. When this final message to humanity, Huda للناس وَبَيِّنَاتِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ The guidance for mankind and the criterion for that guidance and the proof between what is right and wrong is all found within it and yet we abandon it. وَقَالَ اللَّهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Allah is saying, O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So if we don't follow this, then why should Allah answer our dua? وَعَرِفْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَلَمْ تَحَارَبُوهُ وَوَافَقْتُمُ Then He said, why your dua might not be accepted? Because you know shaytan. You know He exists. Because he comes to you to whisper, you are not inclined enough on evil the way Allah created you. It is Iblis who tempts you to that. And beautifies the haram. And beautifies and makes 
makes an admirable and desirable these things which Allah made forbidden. And then we follow that desire along that path. You know shaitan, yet you have agreed with him instead of fighting him. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوْ Allah said in the Qur'an, Indeed, shaitan is to you an open enemy. He's not hiding. He's not trying to be your friend. I'm your friend here. You know, just let me into your home. Let me be amongst your family. Let me into your life. Let me into your body. No, he's an open enemy. A vow. He has no care for you. He's patient, waiting to destroy you. Just like he destroyed himself. So treat him as an enemy. If your human enemy came to your doorstep, would you let him in your house? No. If you knew he was in the area, you would get five deadbolts, lock every one of them to put it on your door. You would grab something to arm yourself for safe areas. You'd call the police. You'd do whatever you had to do to protect yourself, your family, your home, your property from that enemy in this life. Because you don't see, see shaitan, you ignore him. He's your avowed enemy. So treat him as an enemy. Protect yourself with a'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Protect yourself with seeking refuge with Allah from this about enemy. Because guess what? Even though he whispers to you and tempts you, he will abandon you in your time of turning to him saying, he called me to this. He told me about this. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, كَمَثَلُ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ أَكْفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِئُ مِنْكِ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ وَبِ الْعَالَمِينَ Look at how deceptive he is. He is the one who comes to you. And he tells you, Akfur, disbelieve, commit sin, do such and such. And then when the time comes for you to say, yani, he brought me to this, he told me to do this, he's going to say, I'm free from this. I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. You think shaitan doesn't fear Allah? He doesn't know what Allah has in store for him? So be mindful of shaitan, he is your enemy. So if you obey shaitan and you do not fight him, why should Allah accept your dua? وَعَرِفْتُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَلَمْ تَتَّبِعُوا سُنَّتَهُ And you proclaim that you know the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And you love the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, yet you abandon his sunnah. Yet you abandon his sunnah. This is the way you love him. The way you love him is by abandoning his sunnah and celebrating his birth. This is not what's called, that what he called us to. كما قال لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى ابن مريم فإنما أنا عبده فقول عبد الله ورسوله أن أثنتك حديث. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not exaggerate and praise me. I don't need it, I don't want it the way the Christians have the son of Mary. For indeed I'm Allah's servant, so call me Allah's slave and servant and his messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah عز وجل. Multiple times through the Quran, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوهُ مَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the Messenger وسلم, gives you, take it. Whatever he prohibits you from, stay away from it. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ Allah says, what means, say indeed if you love, say, O Muhammad وسلم, indeed if you love Allah, then follow me. Referring to his sunnah, then Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we proclaim we know the Messenger of Allah, and we love the Messenger of Allah وسلم, yet we abandon his sunnah. This is a sunnah that was wahi. Allah said in the Quran what means the Messenger وسلم, he's not talking out of his own self. He didn't come up with these things of how to pray and how to do these things. All of this was wahi, a revelation revealed by Allah that he was guided to. So what we have of the sunnah is something that we should stick to. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Upon you is my sunnah. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Upon you is my sunnah. Not the sunnah of this person or that person, but my sunnah. And he added only to that وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And he added to that only on the sunnah of the righteous khulafa, the righteous successors that come after me, the rightly guided ones. He said, صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُونِي أُصَلِّي Pray as you've seen me pray. خُذْ عَنِّي مَنَاسِكُكُمْ Make hajj, take hajj rights from me and do that hajj the way I perform the hajj. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Upon you is my sunnah. So some say, I don't care how 
he put his hands in prayer. This is what you're saying when someone gives you some proof from the sunnah of how to hold your hands in prayer and you don't change it. You're saying, I don't care how he put his hands in prayer. I don't, even though he felt them, according to the most authentic narrations, above his belly button, not below it, on his lower chest. I don't care that he said Amin out loud. I never said it out loud. I wasn't taught it this way. My sheikh didn't teach me that way. Even though we have proof that the Prophet Hassan himself said Amin out loud when he recited the fact that Hamda out loud prayers and he said it silently in his silent prayers. You will say, I don't care that he grew his beard. You will say that I don't care that he didn't pray Sunnah before Jum'ah. You will say, I don't care that he called us to pray in the Masajid. Every time you're abandoning a sunnah, you're saying, I don't care that the Messenger ﷺ did it. And yet you want to follow him on the day of resurrection, Yom al Qiyamah, so you can save yourself? You know the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, his sunnah has been preserved. It's wahi, it's revelation from Allah, yet you abandon it. Why should Allah accept your dua? وَعَرِثْتُمُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ تَطْلُبُوهَا you proclaim your love for Jannah and that you know Jannah. It's already been created and it will be forever. It will never vanish. You claim you want to go there. We talk about it all the time. But what are you doing to earn it? What are you doing to gain it? You want al firdaus al-A'la to be with the, the prophets and the martyrs and the first to believe. وَمَنْ يُتْعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولَ Allah gave you the prescription to be in Jannah with them. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They will be in the best of company with those whom Allah has blessed and favored. And the Nabiyyin, the Prophets and the Messengers, the Siddiqeen, the first to believe, the Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and the likes of them. وَالشُّهَدَاء, the martyrs, those who died fighting, defending Islam. وَالصَّالِحِينَ and the righteous ones وَحَسْنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا What excellent companions these are. You want Jannah, you want Al-Firdawsi, ask Allah for it. مَنْ سَأَلَ اللَّهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ فِي الْيَوْمِ لِلْجَنَّةِ قَالَتِ الْجَنَّةِ اللَّهُمْ أَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّةِ The authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Whoever asks Allah three times in the day to enter Jannah, and when you ask, ask for Al-Firdaws, the highest of it and the best of it, Whoever asks for Jannah three times in the day, Jannah makes a dua for you. In our little human minds, oh, how can Jannah talk? It's a place. It can speak and it will make a dua for you. Allahumma adkhilhum Jannah. Oh Allah, enter him, enter her into Jannah. All you have to do is want it and desire it and work to gain it. Allah said, Inna ladina amanu wa aminu salihati lahum jannatun tajri min tahtiha al-anhaar. Allah says, Verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds, for them will be gardens under which rivers flow. Paradise, this is the great success. Those who have taqwa, who fear their Lord and keep their duty to Allah, they will have mafaza, the greatest success. Have 50 degrees on the wall, own the whole bank. Why don't you own the whole city, on every ounce, uh, any acre of land in the whole country? You don't got no success until Allah makes you from those who enter Jannah. You want Jannah, but you're not doing what you need to do to gain it, so why should Allah answer your dua? وَعَرِثْتُمَ النَّارِ فَلَمْ تَهْرَبُ مِنْهَا You proclaim you know the fire exists. It's Allah's created it. It's the reason for the high heat in the summers and the cold in the winters. The two breaths that it takes, because it was eating each other up. As we get from the authentic hadith. You know what's there, it's raging, it will exist forever, it will never die or be put to closure. Yet you do not protect yourselves from it by not sinning, by preventing yourself from sin. Allah said, Allah commanded us, warned us, fear the hellfire, because its fuel is not kerosene, it's not wood. Its fuel is men and stones. We could be the fuel for that fire to continue to rage. Protect yourself from the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ, said, Even giving a half of a date in charity, or with a good word, 
a smile of charity to your brother or to your sister, and from the sisters to the sisters, the brothers to the brothers, in their times of hardship or need, comfort. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. These are good words. These are ways you can help protect yourself from the fire. Allah said, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَقَ وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah said, what means then for who taqa, who transgressed all bounds in disbelief, in oppression, in disobedience to Allah, and preferred the life of this world, of this dunya, by following their desires and their lusts, verily his abode will be Jahannam. His abode will be the hellfire. He said, therefore, those who know that Jahannam is there, and we believe in it, but you're not staying away from the sins that you know may enter you into it. Why should Allah accept your dua? He said, وَعَرِفْتُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَلَمْ تَسْتَعِدُّوا لَهُ He said, you know, you say that indeed death is true, yet what have you prepared for? You have not prepared for it. This was his statement. You act as if you can escape it, though death will may never come to you. What have you prepared in correct belief, in tawheed and sound aqeedah, sound creed, and good deeds, so that the angel of mercy takes you, rather than the angel of punishment. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَكْتُوا He said, frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures. One second you're smiling, happy, thinking you're in the best of places. The next second you're on a hospital bed, and you're fighting for your life, and then it may be gone. And we see that to the utmost with our brothers and sisters now, the suffering they're going through. They're young, they're old, they were healthy, they might be sick, they were rich, they were poor, it doesn't matter. When Allah has written death for you, it comes for you. Every soul will taste it and it will come when Allah sends that angel of death to you. So you know that death is true. You know that it happens, you know you can't escape, but what have you prepared for it? ثُمَّ تَرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Say indeed that death from which you flee from, it's going to find you. You cannot escape it. You can look for help on this dunya, or to protect yourself from this dunya, but if Allah wants it for you, it's coming for you. And then you will return to the knower of the seen and the unseen, and He'll tell you what you used to do, and inform you what you did in this life. And if you doubt this for a minute, open your TV, click on your TikTok and your Instagram. Stop turning away from those images. Because that's reality for our brothers and our sisters right now in Philistine and in other lands. We can't even look at the pictures of kids flailing in their mothers and their fathers' arms. All scratched up. Deceased, lined up, names being written on their bodies so you know who's who in case they die. If you love your brothers and sisters in Islam, correct yourself upon these points and what we'll discuss after so Allah will accept your dua. Brothers, if you can move forward, inshallah, to make room for those coming in. In alhamdulillah, ahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'khfiru wa nasta'hidu wa nasallu wa nasallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said He'll answer the call of the da'i, the one who calls upon Him. But some get impatient or they may question Blaming the fact that it may not be answered on Allah, saying He didn't fulfill His promise with Ayatullah. Never think such a thing. Allah may not give you something because He has something better in store and you just don't know it. Allah may be delaying a greater reward for you by being patient and not giving you what you are asking for, or maybe it's harmful for you. Or maybe what you're asking for is not going to be accepted because of the sin and the things that you are abandoning or leaving in this life. We will review يعني, the three last points that he mentioned. He said, when Ibrahim ibn Adham, he was asked, why then is our du'a not answered? 
The last few mentioned, You left off your faults, your shortcomings, where you need to fix yourself, and you started focusing on the faults of the people. Remember the statement of Allah, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلْنَامًا لِلْعَبِيدِ Allah said what means whoever does righteous good deeds, it's for the benefit of himself or herself. Whoever does evil or sin, it's against him or herself. And Allah does not wrong or do any injustice to his slaves. Allah said, إِنَّمَا تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ He said, you are only recompensed for what you used to do. So you busy yourself finding the faults of others instead of working on your faults. Waiting, waiting for people. Waiting for your brothers and your sisters to fail in front of your eyes or to do something wrong in front of your eyes. So you can spread some gossip and some stuff about them. Waiting for them so you can say, oh, everyone thinks this person is such an angel. Look at, look at I know so much about him or her. And you want Allah to accept your du'a. He said, وَأَكَلْتُمْ نِعْمَ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ تُؤَدُّ شُكْرَهَا And you eat from which Allah has provided you, you do not, yet you do not thank Him. Allah, Razak, the provider of all things. Remember this at all times. Your hands, I don't care how much you work, how hard you work, how much you sweat, how, much hour, how many hours you put into your day to earn the income you get on that check or give it to you as cash. Allah is the one who gave it to you. Your work did not get you to that. Allah gave you the power, the, the, the awakeness, the strength to do that, the knowledge to do what you're doing in the first place. It's the qadr of Allah, Allah's decree that gives you what you have. Allah, He said, what Prophet Ibrahim السلام, He said, وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمِنِ وَيَسْقِينِ Even the anbiya, they acknowledge this, of course, saying, it is Allah, He is the one who feeds me and gives me drink. So thank Him for what He has provided you with when you don't need it, or when He didn't need to, عفوا. Thank Allah for giving you what, we do, what you don't deserve or what I don't deserve. We should thank Allah for these things. Because I can tell you even for myself, there's a ton of people who deserve the things I have that I don't deserve. There's many people who deserve what we have more than we do because of the sins we've committed and the lack of thanks and praise we've given Allah. You see our brothers and sisters again, struggling and suffering all across the world. And you saw it even in Palestine and everything. Alhamdulillah, you lost your wife. Alhamdulillah, your parents. Alhamdulillah, your kids. Alhamdulillah, no food. Alhamdulillah, no drink. Alhamdulillah. And we're throwing away water. Throwing away food. Throwing away everything that could be extra that people would love to have. And we don't even question ourselves once. Praise and thank Allah for what you have from what He gave you. And then He ended with saying, And you bury your dead, but you do not take a lesson from it. You bury your dead, but you don't learn a lesson from it. And again, if you haven't experienced it, just go and see the pictures, the videos, of our brothers and sisters from age birth, from age umbilical cord in the womb of their mother hanging out. Boys and girls, men and women, innocent people, go, if you haven't seen it, wrapped up in their akfan, ready to be buried, some in mass graves, some the bleeding could not stop, it's all over their sheets they're, that they're wrapped in and they're shrouded in. You bury your dead, but you do not take a lesson from it. It is a gift from Allah when someone you know or someone you love or someone of this ummah dies before you. It's a gift from your Lord. Because it's a wake-up call to you. So the next time you're at a janazah, don't go sit in the corner and smoke. Don't go sit and talk about this dunya. Don't go talk about what you got to do next. Reflect upon those who've been buried because you could be the next grave next to them. Even if you're strong, healthy, powerful, popular, whatever, whatever tag you want to give yourself. We bury our dead, but we do not take a lesson. Every soul will taste death. On the day of resurrection, you will be paid in full. Your full wages for what you did in this life, good and bad. 
فمن زحزح عن النار whoever is saved from that hellfire وادخل الجنة and is admitted is admitted into paradise فمن زحزح عن النار وادخل وادخل الجنة فقد فاز this will be the successful person ومن حياة الدنيا إلا متاع غرور this دنيا is just متاع غرور it's just an illusion of pleasure it will fade it will go just like the sun sets every day so learn from death remember it Remember it in and out of your prayers. Remember the life of the Barzakh. Remember Yom Al-Qiyamah when we'll be all resurrected and a scale will be brought forth and your deeds will be made into weights and your deeds will be weighed good and bad and a sarat, a bridge, will be laid over Jahannam for every believer to pass over. And some will pass through like lightning. Some may fall into the hellfire. And we ask Allah's refuge from that to be able to clear that sarat and make it into Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do not delay your good deeds. Do not delay your good deeds. We bury our dead. Remember, every time you see them in their exam, that when they're buried, they will be asked, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Ma Deenuk, what is your deen? What is your religion? Man Rajul Alladi Bu'ita Fikan wa Man Nabiyuk, who is this man who was sent to you? Or who is your prophet? Wa Ma Amiluk. What were your deeds? How did you come to know that Allah is your Lord? Islam is your deen. Muhammad Sallallahu is your messenger. Because the only answer will be what was related in the hadith. Qara'tu kitab Allah. I read the book of Allah. Wa amantu bih. And I believe in it. Asaddaq. I affirmed it to be the truth, so I implemented it. This is success. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do not be hasty. Saying, I made dua, and it hasn't been responded to. You're calling upon someone who can hear you even if you whisper on the ground. So take time in your sajda and make it for Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَيُؤْمِنُوا بِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah says what means, and when my servants ask you, O Muhammad Sallallahu concerning me, then answer them, I am indeed near. I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me. So let him obey me and believe in me. Implement the belief of the heart with the tongue, speaking with the actions of the body, of the limbs, so that you may be led aright. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, at the end of an authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, ثم ذكر الرجل يطيع الصفر أشعث وأخبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومدعمه حرام وملبسه حرام ومشربه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at the end of our authentic hadith he said he mentioned the man who had came on a long journey. Your dua is accepted when you make a long journey. يطيل الصبر أشعث وأخبر he's dirty he's disheveled he's in a state of poverty his dua will be accepted. يمد يديه إلى السماء he's raising his hands begging. Allah, and Allah doesn't return those hands empty-handed. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, my Lord, my Lord, affirming Tawheed al rububiyya at the very least. Saying, my Lord, my Lord, but what? Mat'amu haram, his food is haram. Wa madbasu haram, his clothing is haram. Wa shrabu haram, his drink is haram. Wa ghudiya bin haram. And his nourishment is unlawful. So how is he going to be answered in such a state? So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, reflect upon this. It is not saying explicitly his dua won't be accepted, but clear that doing haram and forbidden things is a major reason why a person's dua may not be responded to. So do not fool yourselves. Do not fool yourself saying, oh, I gave charity, and, and I pray my five prayers, and I do this and I do that. Maybe Allah answered you and you didn't know it. Maybe it would have been worse if Allah gave you what you asked for. But one thing is true. We're asking, but we're sinning. We're disobeying. We know Allah, we don't obey Him. We know the Qur'an is the word of Allah, but we don't act according to it. We know the shaitan, but we have agreed with him instead of fighting him. We know that we love the Prophet ﷺ, and he's the final messenger and servant and the best example, yet we abandon the sunnah. You proclaim your love for Jannah, but you don't do what you need to do to get there. You, pertain, you uh, proclaim your fear for the hellfire, but you're not stopping the sins that may lead you there. You proclaim that death is true, yet you haven't prepared for it. You busy yourselves finding the faults of other people instead of looking at your own faults. 
You eat from what Allah has provided for you, but you don't thank Him and praise Him for it. And you bury your dead, but you don't take a lesson from it. And all of this can be seen. Just come to any one of the prayers. This is the beautiful community that was blessed with the masjid when we were the smallest of communities. And Allah allowed us to build this first. And we struggled to complete a row or to get to a second row. Don't tell me it's because the masjid's wide. The masajid are empty. Why should Allah accept our du'a? Before we make our du'a and get to the salah, a couple of quick announcements. Tomorrow is a family night. This community needs to come together. First and foremost, with some good food, that we appreciate and thank Allah for, and to get some benefit. Speaking about some importance of Palestine in our deen, with Masjid al-Aqsa and the likes of that, and also the importance of our identity as Muslims, and stopping this, you know, blending in technique where people don't even know half of us are Muslim. Tomorrow, come for Madhur prayer, then we'll have dinner, we'll come back in for Isha, and we'll have that short benefit and do a raffle for the kids. Bring your whole family. Sacrifice that time. You need to start getting involved in the masajid and increasing your knowledge. And this is for all the other prayers. You will find the beauty in your life come so, that, so much so that when you miss a prayer here, you'll feel like you lost the whole day. Secondarily, there is constantly complaints of speaking in the social hall and the sisters hall during the khutbah. Unless someone is dying, there is no need to speak. The Prophet ﷺ said, you will lose your jum'ah. Whoever plays with the ground in front of him, this is level, I will talk, and whoever does it, they have no jum'ah for them. Even if you tell your brother, this is level, and you lose your jum'ah potentially. So in the social hall, I hear that it happens a lot, in the sisters hall that I hear, and sometimes your brothers, who may be coming in late, I'm not picking on you for coming in late, and a lot easier condition, but you come in and you're talking, and the people turn around, it's distracting. The minute you're walking here, shut off the dunya, come to Allah, come to this deen, come to the those who follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad and if you're going to do so, then your phone and everything else with you does not matter once you enter those two doors. Just sacrifice that little time per week. May Allah bless you and reward you, inshaAllah. Allahumma khfir bil muslimin wa muslimat, wa al-mufinin wa al-mufinat, al-ahyat minhum wa al-amwat, inna ka anta sami'un qalib al-mujib al-a'wat, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulub al-a'adinik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulub al-a'adinik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulub al-a'adinik, اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على أعدائك وأعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرهم يا رب اللهم نفس قلوبهم وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم وعدونا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لأموات المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم واسكنهم مسيح جناتك يا رب العالمين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اشفيهم يا رب العالمين وجعلها تهورا لهم يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربي رب العزة يا الله يسكون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين